Mrs. Adams, my name is Teresa. I understand you're here for a TB test? Yes, I am. We've been overseas and I may have been exposed, so I need to be checked out. Is this going to hurt? Um, it's not really a shot. It's more or less a pinprick and it's practically painless. Okay. So I suppose we should just get it over with then. Uh, but could you just explain things to me as we go along? I want to be able to describe this in a travel article I'm writing. Sure, sure. This needle has a small amount of harmless substance called PPD tuberculin. What I'm going to do next is inject this just under your skin. I'm holding the needle at a 10 to 15 degree angle because I don't want to inject too deeply. Well, that's good. What happens next? At the site where I inject the medication, you'll notice a small bubble appear on your skin. This is called a wheel. If the wheel is fairly large, it may mean that you have tuberculosis. How long do I wait to see if it swells? Well, what you need to do is come back to the office in 48 to 72 hours to have the swelling checked to see if you have a positive or negative reading. This reading is based on how large the swelling is. Well, I guess I'll see you in two days. Before you go, I need you to remember a few things to take care of the spot. All right. Um, like what? Don't cover the spot with a Band-Aid. Don't scratch it and don't rub it dry if you wash it. Just pat it dry with a towel. Well, what if it itches? Well, if it itches, just put a cold compress on it. Okay, let's take a look at your arm. There's nothing much to see. Well, that's pretty good. It's negative. I'll check your pulse first. That'll take just a minute. So just sit comfortably and we'll be all set. After Jillian has successfully measured Anita's pulse rate for one minute, she'll observe Anita's breathing rate for a minute as well. Each inhalation and expiration is counted as one breathing cycle. You don't want your patient to be aware that you're measuring the breathing rate because the patient can alter their breathing pattern. Well, up next, I'm going to take your blood pressure. So would you mind rolling up your sleeve? No, but take a little of the mystery out of this for me because the doctor has told my husband to take his blood pressure every day. What is it that you're measuring and how do you find it? Well, right now, I'm looking for your artery to be able to hear your heart beating. This screw allows some air to escape from the valve. As the cuff deflates, I'll be listening to hear the first sound of your heart beating and note the pressure at which this occurs. That'll be your systolic pressure. Then, I'll wait till I hear no sound at all. That's your diastolic pressure. So what's the story on my blood pressure, up or down? Well, your systolic pressure is up to 160, while the diastolic is the same at 82. So what does that mean? Well, your systolic measures the pressure when your heart pumps. The diastolic is the opposite, the pressure between beats. Okay, so when you're listening to my heart, it's the first sound and then basically no sound that matters? Basically, that's right. Hmm. What if you don't get a good reading? Well, I'll check it again in a minute or two, which probably is what the doctor's going to tell me to do with you. Your blood pressure has never been high like that. Yeah, I've been under a lot of pressure lately, both at home and work. Vital signs are measurements of four essential bodily functions that indicate the general health of the body. There are four vital signs you will take. Temperature, pulse, respiration, and blood pressure. It is extremely important to be accurate when measuring vital signs because decisions about medication and treatment will be based on these measurements. The first vital sign to measure is temperature. Good morning, Anita. I'm Jillian. How are you doing today? Well, I could be better. I think I'm getting the flu. Oh, okay. Well, before you see the doctor, I just need to perform a couple of tests. First, we're going to step in here so I can weigh you. 
Oh, come on now, Jillian. A woman never wants anyone to know her weight. Can I take off my shoes? Absolutely. I always do. And remember, your chart is not a public document. And I'm thankful for that. Uh, but I don't want to know either, so don't tell me, okay? <laughs> no problem. Okay, let's go back into the exam room now. I need to take your blood pressure and do a couple more things before you see the doctor. Okay. Go ahead and sit down on the table over there. You know, according to your file, you've actually lost some weight. Really? Well, that's not so bad then. I'm going to take your temperature. Do you smoke? No, why? Well, smoking can affect your temperature. So can drinking fluids, but only if we were using an old-fashioned glass thermometer. But you're fine. Open up. If you're using a mercury thermometer for any reason, you have to shake it down to 95 degrees and make sure that it's not chipped, that all the glass is intact. There are also digital thermometers that you can use with throwaway sleeves for each patient and the newer disposable strips. You should probably be prepared to use all of them. Wow, that's fast. Technology, isn't it great? Looks like you do have a slight fever. Well, that figures. But at least I lost some weight, so it's not all bad news. <laughs> Another vital sign is respiration. Respiration is the process of inhaling and exhaling. Measuring respirations includes counting the number of respirations per minute and observing for signs of abnormality. Abnormal breathing signs include shallow breathing, labored breathing, where the person struggles to breathe and may make gurgling, rattling, or wheezing sounds, stertorous breathing, where the person makes noises like snoring when breathing, abdominal breathing, where the person uses mostly abdominal muscles to breathe, irregular breathing, where the depth and rate of breathing is not steady, and chain stokes breathing, where breathing alternates between slow, shallow breathing and faster, deeper breathing. To measure respirations, you will need a watch with a second hand and a pen and paper to record the result. Be sure to wash your hands before giving care. In order for you to get an accurate measurement, the person must be unaware that you are counting respirations. Mrs. Brown, I'm going to measure your vital signs, all right? Sure. Therefore, respirations should be measured immediately after measuring the pulse. Simply continue to hold the wrist after measuring the pulse. And watch the chest. If you cannot see the chest rise and fall, hold her arm across the chest and feel the chest move. Look and listen for any signs of abnormal breathing. One rise and one fall of the chest counts as one respiration. Count the respirations for one full minute. Adults normally breathe at the rate of 16 to 20 respirations per minute. Write down the number of respirations per minute and ensure comfort. Remember to wash your hands after giving care and report any unusual observations immediately. Another vital sign you will need to measure is the pulse. Measuring the pulse is a simple way to determine how the circulatory system is functioning. Every time the heart pumps blood, the pulse can be felt at many parts of the body. One of the easiest places to feel the pulse is at the wrist. This is called the radial pulse because the heart is pumping blood through the radial artery. When measuring the pulse, you should note the rate or the number of beats per minute, the rhythm or regularity of the pulse beats, and the force of the beats, whether normal, weak, or strong. To measure the radial pulse, you will need a watch with a second hand and a pen and paper to record the result. Be sure to wash your hands before giving care. Identify the person and tell her what you are going to do. Mrs. Brown, I'm going to measure your vital signs, all right? Sure. Provide for privacy and make sure the person is resting comfortably. The arm should be well supported and relaxed. Find the pulse by placing the tips of your three middle fingers about here, in line with the thumb, directly next to the bone. Apply light pressure until you feel a beat. If you press too hard, you will block the flow of blood and you will feel no pulse. When you have found the pulse, note the rhythm. Is the beat steady or is it irregular? Also note the force of the beat. Is it normal or is it weak or bounding? 
Then note the position of the second hand on your watch. Count the beats until the second hand reaches that position again. One full minute. You should feel between 60 and 90 beats per minute. If the pulse is regular, you may save time by counting the beats for only 30 seconds. Then multiply this number by 2 to calculate the beats per minute. Be sure to write down the pulse count immediately and continue measuring the other vital signs. Remember to wash your hands after giving care. Finally, be sure to report a pulse rate under 60 or more than 90 beats per minute. Also, report a weak pulse or a bounding pulse and report any change in rate, rhythm, or force from previous measurements.